Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Royal Institution's International Research Colloquium. So this is the program for this afternoon. So at this juncture, we will request everyone to please join us for a moment of silence, of reflection and respect for our doxology to be followed by the singing of the Royal Institution Hymn. Progress and honor 
Okay, so once again, welcome to the second Royal Institutions International Research Colloquium this 2021 with the theme UN Capital Development and the New Normal and its impact on business and industry, education and public administration. To give us this afternoon's opening address, may we request Dr. Fellow Professor Dr. Samuel M. Salvador. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, you're on mute, sir. Good afternoon to everyone. Our uh, beloved president of the Royal Institution Singapore, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Atina Georgine Ang, Beloved Chief Compliance Officer of RIS and President of RI Philippines, FDR, Dr. Helen S. Mulano, Honorable uh, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Richard G. Deinos, President, City College of Angeles, who is our keynote speaker today. Honorable FDR, Dr. Professor Glo T. Baisa of PRC and Vice Chair of the Board of Accountancy. Honorable uh, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Danilo Reyes, the Dean of the PUP Graduate School and Business Executive, also Educational Consultants, the Honorable FDR Dr. Emmy Libunao, the, the best Director of Philippine Information Agency, who just retired last year. Also a professor of the PUP College of Business Graduate School. Dr. Fellow, Dr. Donna S. San Juan. Professor of different colleges and universities, but now he is concentrating in PUP College of Business Graduate School, hopefully. Our well-respected founding chairman of the Royal, Royal Institution Singapore and the 300 Royal Institutes, Honorable Dr. Fellow Royal Chartered Architect, Royal Chartered Engineer, Datu, Dr. Professor Ang Chang Zhu, our beloved Dr. Fellow, Dr. Jini Ui Ang, beloved research presenters, 
participants, RIS, PH, employees, Assistant Vice President Lavlin Malte, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to everybody. On behalf of the Royal Institution Singapore, including the 300 Royal Institutes of different professions, I wish to welcome you all in this second series, 2021 International Research Colloquium with the team Human Capital Development in the New Normal and its impact to business and industry, education, and public administration via Zoom teleconference provided by our very own lovely love Malte, who is now based in Switzerland. My friends, the Royal Institution's primary purposes and activities as mandated by the Accounting Corporate Regulation Authority, or known as ACRA, of the Republic of Singapore, per registration number 20037961C includes the following mandates to engage in local and global human resources development activities, including the organizing and hosting of local and global conferences, conventions, summits, workshops, seminars, symposia, fora, congresses, meetings, and the like for every profession to inculcate professionalism and leadership and foster goodwill and understanding to recognize a credit award confer and honor deserving individuals deserving institutions and organizations with educational qualifications professional qualifications achievements skills talents proven track records worldwide, including national and local award. To conduct training development assessment, evaluation, accreditation worldwide, and issue appropriate certification levels of competencies according to your career ways in your respective professions to appoint highly qualified deserving and exceptional individuals as patrons international visiting professorial fellows international learning and development specialists research fellow and professorial chairholder to publish research journals and proceedings of conferences and the like that have been covered or convened. To grant scholarship and or fellowship and sponsor educational observation studies worldwide. To establish worldwide networks and encourages collaborations. And last but not least, the least to propagate 
universal culture of love, happiness, integrity, harmony, peace, and unity for sustainable development. My friends, to operationalize this important mandate, the management was able to formulate policies to strictly implement the three pathways of excellence, namely pathway of excellence for individual membership titles. So you will grow in terms of membership titles if you join this royal institution, Singapore, and specifically your respective royal institute. Another pathway of excellence for every profession, we mean every profession has its own career pathway. So the 300 royal institutes of different professions have their own 300, their own pathways also, career pathways. And the third pathway of excellence is intended for the RIS accredited educational institution or organization. This is through institutional accreditation process. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Institution is indeed committed to carry on its fundamental mandates and activities, whether under normal situation, whether under new normal, or whether it is abnormal condition. As our founding chairman said, and I quote, crisis like this creates more opportunities and time for more creative thinking and action, unquote. Henceforth, without much ado, on behalf of our founding chairman, FDR Dr. Ang Chang Su, and the entire Royal Institution Singapore, allow me therefore to once again welcome you all in this very memorable event under the courtesy via Zoom conference of lovely, lovely Malte. God bless us all. Thank you very much. And mabuhay ang Royal Institution, Singapore, Philippines. Salamat po. Thank you so much, Dr. Fellow Professor Dr. Samuel M. Salvador, Chancellor of Royal Institution Singapore, for that enlightening and powerful opening address. Thank you so much, sir. At this juncture, may we now request Dr. Fellow Dr. Helen S. Molano, Chief Compliance Officer of Royal Institution Singapore and President of Royal Institution Philippines to read the statement of purpose and criteria for today's International Research Colloquium. Good afternoon. Uh, in this fast-paced and highly competitive society, academicians, professionals, technologists, technicians, entrepreneurs, leaders, and students in every industry continuously strive toward professional development to be at par with the rest of the world. Henceforth, the Royal Institution Philippines in collaboration with other more than 100 RI accredited educational institutions and organizations as strategic partners of the Royal Institution Singapore is conducting this RI International Research Colloquium with the theme Human Development, Human Capital Development, 
in the new normal and its impact on business and industry, education and public administration to fulfill our I mission. In this International Research Colloquium, research papers submitted and presented will be further evaluated for publication in the refereed International RI Research Journal. The RI Research Journal is registered with the Ministry of Communications and Information Singapore under the Newspaper and Printing Act Chapter 206 with permit number MCI P open and close parenthesis 111 slash 09 slash 2014. Furthermore, the RI Research Journal is compliant with the following criteria as a reputable international journal. Number one, its publisher, Royal Institute of Publishers Private Limited, duly registered in Singapore with Accounting and Corporate Regulatory Authority registration number 2017004458B. Number two, peer review. The peer evaluators follow the policy guidelines in evaluating all manuscript for publications. Number three, editorial board. Editorial board is composed of prominent professionals in the academe and handling key positions in private and public institutions with higher qualifications, stature in their respective field of professions. Number four, editorial policy. Editorial policy set forth by the Royal Institution Singapore and the Royal Institute of Publishers is strictly followed by the researchers and edu editorial staff. And number five, publication pr frequency. RI Research Journal will be published quarterly, after which the research papers had been presented orally and were refereed by RI International Visiting Professorial Fellows, experts in the field of education, business and industry, public administration and health and sciences. So far, we've already released 10 volumes. Our panel of judges will be selecting best paper and best presenter. So the judging criteria for the best paper are as follows. Relevance, impact and timeliness of the study, 30%. Research design, 20%. Congruency of the problems, findings, conclusions, and recommendations, 40%. Oral presentation and delivery, 10%, with a grand total of 100%. And the judging criteria for the best presenter are as follows. Relevance, impact, and timeliness of the study and uniqueness of ideas, 30%. Knowledge and mastery of the topic, 30%. Oral presentation and delivery, 25%. Quality of visual materials, 15%, with a total of 100%. Thank you and good luck to all our researchers. Thank you so much, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Helen S. Molano. So before we proceed with the keynote address, may we request everyone to kindly open your camera. We will have a group photo. Okay, everyone kindly Face your camera and give us a big smile. One, two, three, smile. All right, so thank you so much, everyone. We'll have another group photo later.
So at this juncture, we will now proceed with the keynote address. Our keynote speaker for today is a multi-awarded school administrator, educator, and researcher. He was a recipient of the following accolades, plaque of recognition and presidential medallion in October, 2020, given by the Commission and Accreditation Association of Local Colleges and Universities, Gawad Tomas B. Lopez, Natatanging Lingkod Pinuno in October 2020, given by the Association of Local Colleges and Universities of the Philippines, Gawad Pagpapahalaga in February 2020, given by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, Tourism Champion Award in July 2019, given by the Association of Tourism Officers of Pampanga, the Alumni Choice Award in May 2017, given by Angeles University Foundation Federation of Alumni Association, Plaque of Recognition for Fostering an Enabling Environment for ICT Integration into Education in May 2011, given by Intel Philippines, Outstanding Teacher of the Philippines Region 3 in 2010 and 20. 2008 respectively, given by Metrobank Foundation. Centennial Award in 2008, given by Pampanga High School and the Department of Education. Specialized Certification of Expertise in Teacher Education in March 2007, acknowledged by the American Biographical Institute. National Prize Winner, Outstanding PERAA Member Teaching B Category in October 2006, given by the Philippine Education Retirement Annuity. Modal Faculty for Instruction and Community Service in June 2005 and June 2004, respectively, given by Angeles University Foundation. He graduated from a reputable Center of Excellence University in Central Luzon, the Angeles University Foundation, obtaining the following degrees. Doctor of Philosophy, major in Educational Management in 20, 2007, Master of Arts in Special Education 2006, Master of Arts in Education, major in English in 1999. Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English in 1994. His special interests and expertise cover school management administration, teacher education, cultural heritage, tourism education. He completed a, a number of massive open distance e-learning courses, including Introduction to Global Citizenship Education, given by UNESCO Asia Pacific Center of Education for International understanding in 2018. Remote teaching and learning, concepts and models, quality assurance in remote teaching and learning, strategic planning and remote teaching and learning, and quality assurance in open distance e-learning from the University of the Philippines Open University in 2020. In the field of cultural heritage, heritage education, he obtained the following certificate courses from reputable universities and institutions in Europe, including arts and heritage Management from Université Commercial Luigi Bocconi in Italy, Heritage Under Threat from Universiteit Leiden in Netherlands, Cultural Heritage in the City from European University Institute, and Global Governance Program in Italy, Conservation from Masterclass San Francisco, USA. He has presented papers in national and international conferences in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, South Africa, South Korea, Taiwan, United Kingdom, and the United States of America and published in reputable index journals. He was also part of the invited writers for the commission Higher Education's Ripples of Change, a journey of teacher education reform in the Philippines published in 2007, together with, a notable, with notable academicians across the country addressing the need for the implementation of the new teacher education curriculum. His expertise, hard work, and accomplishments elevated him as a fellow to the following organizations. President's Fellow, acknowledged by the Association of Local Colleges and Universities, Philippines, 2020 and beyond. Professional Fellow, awarded by the Asia Pacific Institute for Events Management in Leeds, United Kingdom. International Visiting Professorial Fellow and Doctor Fellow of the Royal Institute of Tourism and Educators of Royal Institution Singapore. He was also a CPI International Re Residency Fellow in Seoul, South Korea, and awarded by the Ministry of Culture and Sports of South Korea, and a recipient of Rotary Group Study Exchange Fellow in Denmark and Lithuania, given by the Rotary International. Our keynote speaker, 
also serve as a trustee of the following local colleges and universities in Central Luzon in his capacity as president of the Association of Local Colleges and Universities in Region 3 and trustee of the National Board, including City College of Angeles, Pampanga, City College of San Fernando, Pampanga, Guaga Community College, Pampanga, Bulacan Polytechnic College, Norzagaray College, Pambayan, Dalubasaan ng Marilao, and Batolan Polytechnic College. He also has worked with the Commission Higher Education as a member of the Regional Quality Assessment Team for Teacher Education. His notable accomplishments as a school administrator for his term as the president of City College of Angeles include Gawad Parangal and Certificate of Eligibility by the Commission on Higher Education in 2021, Certificate of Recognition as Higher Education Institution by the Commission on Higher Education 2018, Asia Pacific Institute for Events Management Center of Excellence in Events Management for Tourism Program in 2000, 17 and library science physical education and vocational technical teacher education 2019 apiem international center of excellence for hospitality programs in 2018 candidate status accredited by the commission on accreditation of the association of local colleges and universities in 2018 certificate of accreditation as a continuing professional development provider by the cpd council for, for professional teachers and professional Regulation Commission 2018, Kaisa Sassini Accreditation by the Cultural Center of the Philippines in 2019, the only college to be accredited, award of recognition and distinction in 2018, the only local college to be awarded an outstanding board performance in teacher education in 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our keynote speaker, Honorable Dr. Fellow Richard G. Daenos. Thank you for that uh, long introduction. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I am afraid that I'll be off any time because of this, uh, uh, what do you call this one, unstable uh, um, internet. Uh, but let me be uh, direct with, of course, the assignment given to me for this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at the onset, I wish to extend my gratitude to the organizing committee uh, of this International Research Colloquium <clears throat> hosted by the Royal Institution Philippines for the opportunity given to me to share the best practices we observe in the City College of Angeles and how they relate to the contexts of various institutions from different sectors of the society. Let me greet first our uh, very uh, energetic uh, Chancellor, Dr. Samuel Salvador. Uh, I could see Dr. Georgine Ang of uh, the Royal Institution Singapore, Dr. Polan of Royal Institution Philippines. And uh, my, my greetings to uh, fellow academicians uh, and uh, I laud you for attending this uh, conference. Uh, Perhaps the greatest resource any nation can depend on during such challenging time is its human resource. In the past months, we witnessed the creativity and ingenuity of people in finding novel solutions. A shift to online learning was the primary answer to the major concern on education sector. The key terminologies that now proliferate in educational lingo are synchronous and asynchronous. Other educational institutions operate tight, supplementing online teaching with printed learning packets. City College of Angeles utilized online synchronous and asynchronous modalities. Also, the college prepared its transition plan which highlights the specific actions to thrive in the new normal. Home-based businesses also started to sprout during the lockdown, enabling consumers to place their orders with a click in their mobile device. Many businesses, business owners likewise took advantage of technology by now promoting and selling their goods and services online. 
The national and local government leaders incessantly monitor the situations, collecting real-time data, which serve as basis in their decision and policy making. In Angeles City, the local administration converted the City College of Angeles as a quarantine facility for suspected cases of COVID-19. In response to the new mode of learning adopted in the city, the local leaders purchased 161 million peso worth of 55,000 units of tablets to be loaned among grades 4 and tw to 12 public school students and to students of the City College of Angeles and installed free Wi-Fi to strategic locations in the city. Following the impactful contributions and significant roles, human resources provide special during this new normal, it is highly imperative now capital. The recalibration of anything and everything in particular sector in line with the new normal begins with, it, with its human resources. Hence, capacity building trainings are placed to this end. In CCA, faculty members and non-teaching personnel attended online professional development programs initiated by the college itself. The college also partnered with national and international institutions, equipping CCA personnel with skills and tools for the new mode of teaching and delivery of service. Among them are webinars or, or a webinar on open access technology facilitated by a certified Google educator from Bulacan State University. A webinar on student-centered assessment in flexible learning conducted in partnership with Philippine Educational Measurement and Evaluation Association. An initial orientation on Canvas or the use of Canvas as a learning management system of the college. The Commission on Higher Education Regional Office also initiated preparation of Central Luzon Regional Higher Education Action Plan, which is a product of Region 3 Higher Education Consortium comprised of state universities and colleges, local universities and colleges, and private higher education institutions in the region, and focused on five thematic areas, operations, instructions, research, extension and productivity, and uh, CEDRO three operations. Guided by the principle, sama-sama at tulong-tulong sa panahon ng pandemya, walang iwanan sa mataas na antas ng edukasyon sa Region 3. It aims to guide all 209 higher education institutions in, region, in the region on their moving forward activities aligned with the directives of the national government and the Commission on the Adoption of the New Normal. The Department of Trade and Industry provided assistance to micro, small, and medium enterprises owners through its recovery programs, which include financial subsidies and guidelines, which give consideration on technical requirements for submission. Human resources, values for the new normal. Much may have already been accomplished, but more has still to be done. As we navigate further through the dynamics of the new normal, let's practice the values that best tap the full potential of human resources, including creativity, resilience, and cooperation. One, creativity. Brad, Brad Howarth noted that now is the perfect time for business owners to get creative. Going beyond the context of business, I say that now is when people need to be creative and innovative in the delivery of their services to ensure the usual effectiveness and efficiency of their operations. This is the most opportune period to find notable solutions to the current and imminent challenges that these new normal brings. Almost every country in the world formed a distinct committee of experts tasked 
to address this global threat. In the Philippines, it is the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or simply known as IATF. We have already seen this with the discoveries of various vaccines against COVID-19. According to World Health Organization, there are more than 50 COVID-19 vaccines in trials, and many of them have proven their efficacy, prompting massive use among different nations, first world, and developing alike. This sheds light in this dark time. As the virus continues to mutate to its stronger strain, the public is assured of the efficacy of the vaccines against this. Various contract uh, tracing mobile applications were also developed. In fact, one of them, the Stay Safe, was even endorsed for national use by the IATF, thanks to the tech geniuses. Creativity is not limited to producing something new. It also relates to discovering something new to what is existing. Since the CCA campus is being used as a quarantine facility, thus limiting our entry there, we sought for temporary headquarters when we can deliver our basic services. We are currently housed at the city library where a certain number of personal reports every day following strict health protocols. As leaders in the field, we must promote work environment that provides op opportunities for expression of creative works. Mark McCormack advocates for a proactive new normal, which enables everyone to preserve some of the best of what we're only beginning to discover about how we all want to continue to work together in the future. He further lists down three best practices which we used to do in the previous normal, which can be further maximized in the new normal. One, agile or flexible workplace arrangements. The new normal workplace or even the future workplace may see not fully occupied cubicles, because the occupants are working from home. Furthermore, the 8 to 5 p.m. schedule may eventually become passe as we pay attention more on the quality of the output of employee rather than the amount of time spent in the office. The second one is human-centric workplace uh, cultures. Every human being's complexity and intricacy influences his behavior in the workplace. Hence, a more understanding and accommodating work environment should be established. Such kind of atmosphere will promote maximum use of potentials on the part of the workers. Number three, diversity in workplace. This speaks of the minority and marginalized populations which may have difficulty with the requirements and of the new normal, such as internet connectivity and appropriate device. Hence, leaders should formulate long-term solutions to address these kinds of issues, which may not only be relevant during the new normal, but also in future instances. The second value is resilience. Cross, DeLeon, and Greenberg in their article at Harvard Business Review, cited that resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks. And such value is very evident today as we continue, uh, we see stories of successes and triumphs, no matter how big or how small. The study of Austin and Gregory also suggests that personal resiliency for pharmacists requires substantial workplace support. Such value should be cultivated among employees to ensure their preparedness to whatever negative circumstances, both professional and personal, as they come their way. It is their disposition in stressful situation that will spell the difference of their success and failure. The third is cooperation. The same authors also mentioned 
that resilience is also heavily enabled by strong relationships and networks, which leads to my final value, cooperation. They even enumerate of relational sources of resilience, which are empathy, work surge, politics, pushback, vision, perspectives, purpose, and humor. Knowing that someone is with you can lighten up the burden. Truly, the support that people provide us in challenging times contributes to the development of one's resilience. The value of cooperation is best seen on the response of the society to this pandemic. Various sectors come together to offer their expertise, their time, service, and resources in our defense against this virus and in response to the challenges it poses. We see this among educational institutions during their online learning resources to one another. We see this among government agencies, the Department of Health, Department of Finance, Department of Education, among others, coming together, offering their intelligent op uh, opinions. We see this on private individuals expressing their support to the local government's efforts through donations. Imagine the power that will be unleashed if every person pours in their ideas together in eradicating this pandemic. The possibilities are endless. And this is what this international research colloquium is all about. It brings together experts from different fields in an exchange of ideas in the spirit of mutual cooperation. These significant ideas are drawn from their creativity. And the ultimate output of this event, a guide towards resilience in championing the new normal. With that, I thank you for listening and I wish you a very fruitful day ahead. Mayap agat panapon po kayungan. Thank you so much, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Richard Gita Enos, for that interesting and enlightening speech, sir. May we request for a copy of that speech? Yes, ma'am. I already, uh, I have just sent it, uh, uh, I think, uh, around a minute or, uh, or so. Hi, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So at this juncture, we will now present the Board of Judges for today's International Research Colloquium. Our first judge is a special lecturer at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines and International Visiting Professorial Fellow of Royal Institution Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Fellow Dr. Emeline Q. Good afternoon, ma'am. Our next judge is a member of the Board of Accountancy of the Professional Regulation Commission of the Philippines and an honorary fellow of Royal Institution Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Fellow Professor CPA Dr. Gloria T. Baisa. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Next, we have the CEO, owner of Holiday Park Hotel in Baguio City, and Honorary Fellow of Royal Institution Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Fellow, Dr. Danilo T. Reyes. Good afternoon, sir. Next, we have our very own Chancellor of Royal Institution Singapore, Honorable Dr. Fellow Professor, Dr. Samuel M. Salvador. And we have a faculty member at the Graduate School of the College of Business Administration of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Dr. Fellow CPA, Dr. Donatila A. San Juan. Good afternoon, ma'am. So for the research paper presentations, we have five scholar written research papers to be presented today. Oral presenters are given 10 minutes each to present their papers. If their presentation exceeds 10 minutes, we will interrupt the presentation and proceed to the next one. We have your PowerPoint presentation with us, so we will be the one 
who will share the screen with your PowerPoint in it. Kindly give us a signal if you would want to go to the next slide. Alternatively, you may also control your PowerPoint by sharing your screen. All right, so we will now proceed with our first presenter. Our first presenter is a college professor and college research head of University of Mindanao Panabo College. Please welcome Dr. Amelie El Chico for her research, distress, gratitude, and online coping strategies in the academe during the pandemic COVID-19 epoch. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. My title is Distress, Gratitude, and Online Coping Strategies in the Academe During the Pandemic COVID-19 Epoch. Maddayao na hapon sa tanan from all the way from Mindanao. COVID-19 is a global effect global problem affecting higher education institution. This pandemic lead to a strong reason among students who experience distress. This cross-sectional study aimed to examine students' distress, gratitude, and coping strategies in the academe during the COVID-19 pandemic. The finding shows that adequate information and high-risk perceptions were accessible to students and medical prevention measures were perceived as highly effective. There were students satisfied with the government's actions to mitigate problems. Unwillingness to online blended learning approach, however, has been observed and students use different approaches to deal with the problems, mental health challenges during this COVID pandemic among HEIs and it's important to address mental health of the learners. The keywords are distress, gratitude, online coping strategies and academic COVID-19 pandemic. Next, please. As introduction, Introduction of this study, going back in the world's history, globally we've been attacked with different phenomenal pandemic that causes fatal disruption among living things and human being existing in this world, particularly last year, 2019. The existence of novel coronavirus infection or what is commonly known as COVID-19 was recorded in Wuhan, China, which spreads rapidly around the world. Moreover, the first ever case in the Philippines was recorded last January 30, 2020, and on March 7, 2020, the first local transmission of COVID-19 was confirmed by WHO 2020. With this outbreak, this fatal pandemic, it brought numerous impacts to the lives of the people, even to the acad academic perspective. People around the world were put into quarantine to prevent the rapid spreading of novel coronavirus, according to David Rye and Agbulos 2020. As quoted by Margaret Visser, where there's no gratitude, there's no meaningful movement, human affairs become rocky, painful, coldly indifferent, unpleasant, and finally break all together so the social machinery grinds along the soon ceases up. Next, please. Uh, the independent variable are the following. We have distress and gratitude. And the uh, uh, other variable is. Next, please. 
methods. Uh, this was a cross-sectional on the different perception and distress gratitude and online coping strategy among students in double the North Philippines. This study was conducted by the researcher during the epoch of COVID-19 cases around the Philippines, and particularly in double the North, it was placed under enhanced community quarantine. The questions were adapted from the study of Williams respondents were determined randomly and uh, online developed through Google form. The survey was linked to the respondents via social media and there were a total of 126 respondents on online survey, including the teachers and age ranging from 18 to 64. Next, please. Uh, for the distress level, according to Uyashi and Yamada, uh, psychological distress is a term used to describe the general psychopathology of an individual with combination of depressive symptoms, anxiety, and perceived stress. In this book, it is stressed by the authors that it gathered present topical research in the study and the symptoms caused by coping mechanisms relating to psychological distress. For more than 150 years, empowering practices have been used by social workers in their work with the families and the techniques of today differ significantly from those pioneers or those a few years ago. Today, practitioners recognize that empowering others is impossible. Social workers can, however, it assists others to empower themselves. Synthesizing several theoretical supports, the strengths perspective, system theory, of family well-being and serious coping stress, according to WISE, JB of 2005. Next, please. In the gratitude level, it, it has different ways because uh, before COVID, we could offer a handshake, a pat on the back, that. So moreover, the direct verbal or written forms of communication is, is uh, acceptable. Now, COVID social distancing era, there are different means of expressing appreciation, a shout out at a Zoom work meeting, a thumbs up, a heart emoji, and a retweet on a daily week email at your team. Next, please. Uh, so when we have an achievement, we have a monthly star colleague, uh, we are given um, recognition and beyond our duties, uh, we need to for, for patient cares, for example. Research demonstrates that the small gestures can result in tremendous impact in well-being. Emmons 2007, Emmons expressing gratitude directly, and we can greatly enhance our well-being by articulating gratitude in written or spoken form, even to ourselves, which allows us to focus in the moment and what appreciate and brings us joy, hap happiness, or satisfaction. During the past uh, moments of crisis, such as COVID-19 pandemic, a grateful perspective is a critical to sustain our positive attitude, to energize, to heal, and to bring hope. But positive psychology research demonstrates that positive emotions, including gratitude, are symbiotic with health and wellness, such as positive emotions promote happiness and flourishing, creating upward spiral, according to Fredrickson, Seligman 2011. In contrast, negative emotions are important reminder of dangers or unfulfilled needs grover at all 2011 being grateful is a free mindful practice to help us cope with anxiety and uncertainty by focusing on what we value which is on control and with what we can give back by emons 2013. next please on online coping strategies, according to Folkman, it defines online coping as thoughts and behaviors facilitated by internet that people use to manage stressful situations. Study supports that it provides online support groups have relatively long history, Reigns and Young 2009 and Wright and Bell 2003. Moreover, there are recently been a rise in studies that examining the role of social network sites or SNS mostly in Facebook and providing support like Damian Van Einen 2014 and Preston Egermont 2015 and Osakaya and La Rose 2014. Websites and online support groups provide information on virtual any topic from health to work and relational problems. Younger and highly educated people are especially likely to turn into internet first before taking additional actions. For example, when we face health issue, according to Kosh Wisher et al. 2010, after gathering information online, individuals are better able to understand their problem and take appropriate action. Barak, Bonel, Nesem, and Solar 2008. For coping strategies to reduce stress, it's necessary condition for pre preventing the harmful effects of prolonged stress, according to William. Coping strategies refer to specific efforts 
people use to master, reduce, or minimize stressful events. Coping is a multidimensional and involves various strategies of which some are functional than others. A study of Cydrides, 2008, reveals that five most frequently used coping strategies by students browsing the internet, sleeping and resting, watching TV shows or movies and instant messaging. For the result, um, with a further analysis of uh, multiple regression can be conducted by uh, two variables that can significantly influence coping strategies. And it is found out that only gratitude can significantly influence the coping strategies while distress is not significantly influential. Next, please, for the recommendation and conclusion. Next, please, we will move faster. Paul. Okay, for conclusion and recommendation, the COVID-19 pandemic caused significant concerns among students, especially among communities in the Southern Philippines. Based on the findings of the study, the students will be aware COVID-19 pandemic and possess sufficient knowledge and global concern, even though there were still gaps in the various points. Now, in the COVID social distancing era, there are different means of expressing appreciation. Again, a shout out in a work meeting, an emoji. So through this uh, distress by students regarding getting COVID-19 infection, there's still enough evidence as students are uh, two local colleges in Southern Philippines practice measures to deal with gratitude during the threat of global health security. In the future, HEI should strengthen the plans and management strategies concerning outbreaks and pandemics, which may affect local communities. HEIs should have an innovative and helpful approach to promote and address mental health issues of students during pandemic, and more importantly, through of embracing paradigm shift, pedagogy, delivery of school, but now this is applicable, up, uh, applied already. So to improve um, the government subsidy and educational support in the future should include capacitating Filipino learners in using online tools, considering health challenges, challenges like other community emergencies during any in the future. Okay. Thank you so much for listening, and that's end my presentation. Maayong hapon. Thank you so much, Dr. Emily Chico, for that presentation. We will now proceed with our second presenter. Our second presenter is a college instructor at Web ICA University of Science and Technology. Please welcome Mr. Junel A. Constantino for his research and analysis on the performance in licensure examination for teachers led of teacher education graduates of NEUST San Isidro Campus. Thank you. May I share my screen, Pa? Yes, sir. I know, can everybody see my screen? Yes, Paul. Good afternoon to each and everyone and to all the members of the Royal, Royal Institution. I am Sir Janil A. Constantino and together with our campus director, which is also a member of this Royal Institution, Engineer Maria Teresita C. Vega. Um, I would like to present our research entitled An Analysis on the Performance in the Licensure Examination for Teachers of Teacher Education Graduates of NEUST San Isidro Campus. The Licensure Examination for Teachers, or LET, is a qualifying exam for all aspiring teachers. There are separate exams depending on what grade level you intend to teach. Passing the licensure examination for teachers is an indication of quality education offered by the teacher education institution in the country. Also, as claimed by Esmeralda and Perez Espinosa 2015, high percentage of passers in the LED indicates the competence of the teacher education program graduates of state colleges and universities. So in response to the call of academic excellence. This study will analyze and identify the teacher education graduates in their general education, professional education, and specialization of the licensure examination for teachers from the academic year 2016 to 2019 through documentary analysis and descriptive research design. 
the study of data will show the number of passers on the average is above the left national passing percentage. So the objectives of this research, number one, to compare the overall passing percentage for BSE and BE ed programs to the left national passing percentage for the year 2016, 2017, 2018, and March of 2019 for both the first timers and repeaters. So it is actually a combination. Number two, describe the lead performance of the BE ed and BSA graduates in terms of general education, professional education, specialization. So when we mean here describe, I would just like to share with you the, the percentage or, or the, uh, the percentage of the scores, the passing scores of the uh, takers. Number three, identify the weaknesses of the BE ed and BSA graduates in the licensure examination for teachers, those who got actually a score of 74 and below. And based on the results, and I will just add in the recommendation, uh, on the enhancement plan on how to improve the lead performance of our co-ed students. This study will really help teachers in the BE ed and the BSA programs in our university to provide intervention programs in teaching and assisting graduates to attain high ratings in the lab. In turn, the students will be aware of their scores in the lab and which part they have excelled or not. This, help the, this will help the university be mindful if they have fulfilled their responsibilities and be aware of their performance. It will also be used as a motivation for future takers of the examination and will help faculty members on their scholarly related research work like this one. For our methods, our research used the descriptive method and the results were presented in tables and aimed at casting light on the performance in the licensure examination for teachers. Data from the PRC or Philippine Regulation Commission on the licensure examination for teachers of NAUSD San Isidro campus in both the BE ed and BSE for the year 2016 up to 2019 were obtained, wherein performances of the teacher education graduates in general education, professional education, and a specialized subject for Bachelor of Secondary Education were included. Only the general education and professional education were obtained for Bachelor of Elementary Education. And the data gathered are tallied, analyzed, and interpreted. Descriptive statistics such as frequency counts, ranking, and percentage was also used. Okay. For the result, we have here figure number one, which shows the overall B ed passing percentage against the national passing percentage. It clearly shows that the passing percentage of the lead takers for March 2016 is lower than the national passing percentage by 12.11%. This is due to the number of the repeaters that took the lead. It then jumped to 3762 surpassing the national passing rate due to the increase of the first timers who took the lead. It continuously achieved a percentage higher than the national passing rate for March 2017 and March 2018 and September 2018, and then slightly registered a passing rate lower than the national passing rate for March 2019. The fluctuating results of the BE ed passing percentage against the national passing percentage shows an unstable performance in life examination for teachers by the first timers and the repeaters. And it also shows that the repeaters really pulled down the passive percentage of the entire BA program of NAUSD San Isidro campus. Figure number two shows the overall BS, uh, BSA passing percentage against the national passing percentage. It can be noted that the performance of the BSA graduate students of NAUSD San Isidro campus in the licensure examination for teachers from March of 2016 to March of 2019 is below the national passing rate. It is due to the performance of the repeaters, repeaters in the lab. 
for three consecutive years, their passing percentage is pulling down the overall passing percentage of the DSP graduate lab takers. The next data on the screen shows the results of the licensure examination for teachers during March 2016 to March 2019. It shows that percent on number of scores 74 and below varies from 50 to 50.68% 60, to 91.84% for the B ed program in the general education subject. Whereas in the prof ed subjects, it was during September 2016 to March 2019, varying frequency percentage occurred 55.44% to 72.60% on the number of the frequencies of scores 74 and below. In general education subject of the BSE program, it was revealed that the percent scores of frequencies varies from 15.23% to 47.52% scores of 74 and below. And the percentage frequency showed actually the strength of the student takers on the said subject as a result below 50% occurrences. So if the number registered more than 50%, then we can consider it as the weakness because majority failed on that particular domain. In the professional education of the BSE program since March 2016 to March 2019, the percent frequency of the scores vary from 45.59% to 94.73%. Frequencies of the scores 74 and below were as in the field of specialist in subject, it was 54.65% to 83.17%. So it is actually uh, um, um, the result shows, I guess, not that good when it comes to the number of those who got score 74 and below. The next data you see on the screen shows the percentage of frequencies of the score 74 and below for the year 2016, 2017, 2018, and March of 2019 for B ed and BST. And we are considering it as our witnesses in the licensure examination for teachers. It can be gleaned that the general education subjects were found to be the weakness of the DED program during March and September of 2016, March and September 2017, and March and September of 2018, whereas uh, professional education subjects became its weakness for the March 2018 and March 2019. Um, the let results was revealed as weakness if more than 50% frequencies of scores were 74 and below. In the BSE program, the specialization and professional education subject became the weakness of the let takers during March 2016 and March of 2018 as revealed by the number of frequencies of scores 74 and below, whereas the field of specialization showed a higher percentage of frequency of scores 74 and below covering September 2016, March and September of 2017, September of 2018, and even March of 2019. So in the light of these results, we can, we can clearly see that from March 2016 up to March 2019, the let takers of NAUST San Isidro Campus graduates under the BSE program perform, sad to say, poorly with a percentage passing rate below the national passing rate. The scores of the majority of the let takers under the BE and BSE program for the year 2016 up to March 2019 in general education, professional education, and specialization were also under 74 and below. The performance on the live examination for teachers of the BE and graduates is weak in both the general education and professional education, whereas the performance of the BST let takers is weak in both the specialized subject and professional education. In view of the conclusion, it is highly recommended that an intervention be done among the let takers of NAUSD San Isidro 
campus. That's why we have developed the LED Performance Enhancement Plan, which has one objective, that is to increase the rate in licensure, licensure examination over the national passing rate for the first and second teacher education takers, both in BSE and BA program. And we came up with seven strategies. Number one, to identify the failed and past subjects of student takers in the licensure examination for teachers. Number two, expose trained teacher education students to diagnostic examinations offered by review centers. Number three, conduct refresher classes scheduled every Friday for the second semester before the teacher education student graduate. Encourage student takers to attend review classes conducted by education faculty members beginning this second semester, especially academic year 2019-2020 last year, specifically those second takers. And invite review centers to initiate conduct review sessions during the review classes scheduled by the campus for this for the past semester. And collation of past examinations module for use during reviews to students. And lastly, strict implementation on the retention policy of the students on who can continue in the BSc in its respective major field and in the BE ed program. So hopefully, hopefully, um, the lab performance enhancement plan can be implemented, which is again only one goal to increase the rate in license for examination for teacher. So may this research serve as an eye opener, not only in our university, but also to other universities as well, who, has, who is offering education as their program. With that, thank you so much for listening. Again, I'm Sergio Constantino. God bless you all. Thank you so much. We will now proceed with our third presenter. Our third presenter is currently the Associate Professor Five and formerly the Vice President for Administrative Affairs of the Iloilo State College of Fisheries from 2017 to 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Michael B. Dizon for his research, Students Perception and Attitude Toward Plagiarism in Academic Writing, Basis for Intervention to Improve Understanding of Academic Integrity. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. To the panel board of judges, to my fellow researchers, good afternoon. I'd like to personally thank the Real Institution Singapore for giving this opportunity to present one research paper of mine titled Students' Perception and Attitude Towards Plagiarism in Academic Writing, Basis for Intervention to Improve Understanding of Academic Integrity. Plagiarism has been a problem to students who are into academic writing because of industrial revolution and easy access to abounding information, potential plagiarism could affect students at all levels of the academy. So this study was uh, undertaken to investigate students' perception and attitude toward plagiarism. But more importantly, it is anticipated that this research will help to highlight complacency and promote understanding in areas where cases of plagiarism are not currently being acknowledged. For the objective, this study was conducted to determine the perception of attitude toward plagiarism of fourth-year college students of different courses at Iloilo State College of Fisheries Philippines for academic year 2018 to 2019. Particularly, there are, four, there are five specific objectives. One is to determine students' attitude toward plagiarism taken as a whole and group as a gender and degree. The second, to determine how students perceive plagiarism taken as a whole and group as a gender and degree. The third is to determine the differences or the variation in students' attitude toward plagiarism, group as a gender and degree. The fourth specific objective is to determine the differences in students' perception and plagiarism, group as a gender and degree. And of course, the last is to determine the relationship between the perception and attitude toward plagiarism of the fourth year college students. So this study is a descriptive correlational one. So out of 101 students, 81 were randomly selected as part of the study. Those students who are undertaking scholarly work such as thesis writing or research work for a particular purpose. So the researcher used two questionnaires of Mavrinak and Orem to determine the attitude of students, attitudes of students and, perception, and their perceptions 
toward plagiarism or plagiarism. So for a data analysis, I use mean frequency percentage man with new test, the Pascal Wallace H test and the Spearman rule. So as you can see that I use the, uh, for inferential analysis, the non-parametric tests were used because uh, of the type of data or the questionnaire that the, of the characteristics of the questionnaires used in this study. So in, on the screen, you can see that among the, the, the four courses, there are 45 or 55.6% elementary education students um, as respondents of this study. And uh, there are more female or 58 or 71.6 female uh, took part as respondents of this study. So the question, how will do students really understand plagiarism? So out of the items, many items in the questionnaire, one particular item, as you can see in the screen, on the screen, copying the words from another source without appropriate reference or acknowledgement. So there are 54 or 67% of students perceive that this item, uh, copying the words from other sources without citing any references is really a serious plagiarism. On the right side, the second table, table two, the sample item, which is copying the words from another source with an acknowledgement, 55 or 68% of the respondents could not identify whether copying the words from another source with citation is a plagiarism or not. So moreover, most students were agree that plagiarism is bad because it is dishonesty and a form of intentional theft of intellectual property rights, which is actually 76.5%. In addition, when plagiarism is committed, someone denies himself the opportunity to receive positive feedback and improvement of his work. So 80.2% of the students said that if someone committed plagiarism, he or she denies himself the opportunity to receive positive feedback and improvement for his work. So I think these results and discussion were, uh, were reflected on the two tables on the right side. Okay. So this study also reveals, next slide please, that there are no significant differences in students' perception of plagiarism when grouped as a gender and degree, but there is a significant difference in their attitude toward plagiarism when grouped as a gender. So sex is really a factor in determining, so meaning male, females have different perceptions, um, perception or attitude towards plagiarism. And there's, this study also reveals, revealed that no significant relationship exists between perception and attitude toward plagiarism. So in the, on the table, on perception and plagiarism, gender with U, value P, which is for both gender and degree have P values higher than the level of significance. For attitude toward plagiarism, gender is, P value for gender is lower than the level of significance, which is 0 0.05. In degree, it's higher, it means, it means that only gender on the attitude toward plagiarism has a significant difference on this study. So this, the two tables reflected on the screen shows the, the, significant, the results. So for conclusion recommendations, particular attention should be given to academic integrity intervention by broadening students' attitudes towards plagiarism. Teachers should integrate, and the, the results of this study suggest that provision of rules and sanctions to any form of plagiarism, plagiarism must be apparent to students. So currently, we have already have our plagiarism software uh, based on the results of the study. The school was able to, to acquire a plagiarism software for students' use to avoid this serious issue in the academia. So thank you and God bless us all. Thank you so much, Dr. Michael B. Dizon for that presentation. Thank you so much, sir. And now we will proceed with our fourth presenter. Our fourth presenter is currently a faculty of University of Perpetual Health System Delta, College of Dentistry, and the subject in charge of research, orthodontics, health economics, pharmacology, and general histology. He is also the head facilitator of Light Orthodontics Training Center in the department head of JNRAL, Family Corporation Hospital Dental Department. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Fellow Dr. Brian E. Esporles. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Brian. Uh, I'm lovely. May I share my screen? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, can I, can everyone see my screen now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So my my presentation is entitled Standard Cephalometric Norms for Airway Morphology for Filipinos. Okay. For the introduction and background, may I introduce everyone the concept of obstructive sleep apnea, which is currently uh, uh, affects 25 million Filipinos and more of and more more than worldwide. And in the Philippines, there is an estimated 28% of the population who is suffering from snoring. And 19% of the Filipino community or population is also suffering from sleep pattern disorder. Okay, And from 2000, 2007, an uh, initial report of road accident due to sleep, sleep pattern disorder is 8% and it gradually increased to an extensive 19% in the early, uh, in 2011, in 2011. And then 6% of the stroke cases in the Philippines is also associated to obstructive sleep apnea and airway morphology disorder. And then the problem in the, in the, in the medical field here in the Philippines is the normative values that we are that we are using to diagnose sleep uh, sleep disorder and airway disorder is from a Caucasian descent, and we all know that the morphology of the airway of any of anyone from different ethnic origins may be the same in terms of anatomical structure morphology, but in terms of dimensions it differs. So sleep, uh, sleep related disorder may lead to vehicular accident. And this is now a, the, this is now the Malampati score that might help us reveal if you are at risk of developing um, obstructive sleep apnea. If you can take a minute, you can check your mouth uh, in front of the mirror, uh, open your mouth as wide as possible and put your tongue out. As, uh, as far as possible, and then see if you can see the uvula or the entrance to your throat. If your throat, if, if you see like this, number one, you are of no risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea. What is obstructive sleep apnea? This is the condition wherein you suddenly awaken at night, gasping for air. Okay, and then number two, you have a moderate risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea. Number three, these are conditions that you are at high risk already of developing uh, obstructive sleep apnea. And at the same time, you are already a definite snorer. And then if it's uh, malampati level four, that means that you are a patient with obstructive sleep apnea. But how are we now going to quantify this using a diagnostic tools or a normative value. We will be using a diagnostic tool such as a X-ray film for your throat and for your skull. Okay, so the objective of the study is to the, the objective of the study was to deter, to develop a standard cephalometric values of airway morphology for Filipinos to serve as a diagnostic tools for Filipinos who are suffering from airway problems. Okay, so I utilize clinical descriptive research with purposive sampling technique. 48 subjects comprises of 23 male and 42, uh, 42 female with harmonious dental facial profile with no airway disorders participated in my studies. Okay, their cephalometric x ray films uh, of all of their cephalometric x ray films were traced, measured, and analyzed and subjected to subjected to statistical treatment, okay? As a result, there are angular biomarkers who present uh, significant differences between gender, but it presents also a significant relationship to a soft tissue, uh, soft tissue biomarker and linear biomarkers. So these are the biomarkers in terms of degree, SNA, A and B, SNB, NSBA, and HPSP. So what are these biomarkers? 
If you are now going to check the cephalogram of the patient, this is the x-ray, the lateral skull x-ray of the patient, we will, we, academy, uh, we, clinician, will be uh, measuring these angles, okay? And we will try, uh, we are going out to interpret the result based on the st standardized norm of the airway morphology, okay? And as a result, this is now the, uh, the result of the biomarkers. So this, if the measurement of the patient falls on this uh, range, that means that the airway morphology of the patient is normal. Otherwise, there is a disorder. Okay? So most of these biomarkers has no significant difference between genders. However, for the linear measurement, there are three or, uh, no, sorry, there are four biomarkers that are di different from between genders, okay? It basically says that the upper and the lower facial height of the male patients are technically longer compared to the female counterpart, okay? And then from this, uh, from this study, it was revealed that uh, using regression analysis, the selected skeletal biomarkers matches some other biomarkers, for example, NSBA and HPSP. If you are now going to check the red angles, we have two red angles in this cephalogram. If, this, um, if the upper angle, this is the NSBA, increases in size, okay, there is a corresponding increase also to the HPSP, the lower red angle. Okay? So if the angle of the HPSP increases its size, it will block off the airway of the patient, which will make the patient susceptible to obstructive sleep apnea. So with these figures, now we can now quantify if the patient is a candidate or of very high risk or predisposed to an obstructive sleep apnea. The second biomarker that possesses a significant uh, result to, to, um, to obstructive sleep apnea is the RPA-PAS. RPA stands for retropharyngeal airway space and PAS stands for posterior airway space. So if the retropharyngeal airway spaces, space decreases in size, it might also decrease the size of the posterior airway space, which will constrict the flow of the air going through the lungs and going out from the lungs. And this might contribute to the development of obstructive sleep apnea. So from this research, we were now able to de determine which biomarkers can help in the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea, particularly for the Filipino patients. It rejected, it, it, it rejected the null hypothesis that there is no significant relationship exists between the skeletal markers because there are specific relationships that exist between the soft tissue and the hard tissue biomarkers. Okay? And from this uh, research, this can be now the base point for the airway analysis disorder that will aid diagnosis for your patient. For the recommendation, it will be recommended that the college uh, or the college of dentistry who should work hand in hand with the respiratory therapy and explore further research on this endeavor, like using additional biomarkers or using additional bio landmarks in your cephalometric x-ray so that more parameters can be measured and we can develop a stronger diagnostic tool for airway analysis. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Dr. Isporlas, for that presentation. We will now proceed with our fifth presenter. Our fifth presenter is a graft prevention and control officer at the Office of the Ombudsman of the Philippines and a part-time college instructor at the College of Political Science and Public Administration of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Eugenio F. Santiago III, 
for his research, The Battle of Who's, Battling the Professional Rivalry and Promoting the Culture of Professional Ethical Collaboration. Hello, ma'am. Hello, uh, good, good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, ma'am, ma'am Lab, uh, can I uh, control my uh, presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I guess um, I'll 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 ask the secretariat to just uh, flash it. It's no longer okay. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I'll just um, give you if ever I'll move this uh, onto the next slide. Okay. Um, First and foremost, I would like to thank uh, the members and officers of the RI, Royal Institute Singapore and Philippines, for giving me the opportunity to uh, share uh, this paper, which um, actually uh, the 10 minute um, time for me would um, uh, will not be enough to discuss the entirety of the paper itself, but just the the what how what how, what are the parts of the paper itself so let's go to the first slide first so basically um i wrote this paper uh, also um in view of the novel coronavirus pandemic wherein we saw how good our our professionals different sectors of society help um in uh combating and um, minimizing the impacts of the pandemic in our society. Uh, we saw uh, champions in different fields and also we, all, we learned some um, uh, we learned some uh, criticisms on how government employees or officials and sectors um, implement uh, government plans and as well as you know, as, as well as for collaboration with other sectors. So uh, the paper itself is about ethics. Um, I discuss um, in, the in, the, in the next slide. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, the contents um, are as follows. So it has an abstract, an introduction, the statement of the problem, the method that I used uh, the discussion, analysis, and recommendation. Um, usually, us researchers do not venture into starting or uh, do doing a qualitative research because it is really um, hard and it is very um, uh, it's hard and it is really uh, questionable in some respects whenever we will be asked what is our basis. But uh, for this uh, particular paper, um, uh, as I, in, the introduction itself, uh, next slide please, and background, I started about so how social science play a vital role in our society. So um, me as a um, a law graduate and a public administration uh, practitioner, uh, we are in the area of social sciences. And most of the time, uh, social scientists and natural scientists are in rivalry of each other, stating that they are much better than the other. Or otherwise, um, there are always um, a disconnect between the two but uh, the purpose of the paper is for me to is to espouse that it, we must stop this uh, rivalry or this uh, connotation that natural and social sciences do not uh, come together and uh, make our lives better you no know? so um the need also to address a uh, di discussion on ethical professional collaboration and as well as professional rivalry like uh, other professions saying that they are much better, they are champions right now because uh, they perform more right now in the pandemic situation. But uh, the thing is uh, collaboration in the stop of the who is the who is the best who is the best should happen already e even not only during this pandemic time but also in the near future for us to become more productive in our in our practice of profession. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so that's the significance of the of this study is to ex espouse a champions in different fields, understand um, what is professional rivalry, what is ethical collaboration. Uh, basically, the paper I wrote is um, I want to start up a discussion on this and uh, a start up research for uh, pro for future collaboration research about the topic. And I, I think uh, the uh, Dr. Esporles has already mentioned that the, one of the recommendations he had is he will be collaborating with respiratory therapists and other professions um, in line with the uh, need for further studies of a certain topic, as well as our keynote speaker had already mentioned some of the um, accomplishments, the the good practices that every that each and every sector had done during this time of uh, a pandemic, and I am very thankful for this opportunity of sharing this paper to you. Also, next slide. So. The problem which I formulated for this paper is how can professional organizations minimize problems of rivalry and promote professional ethical collaboration? So this is really a quite um, a broad in a sense that I just want to, uh, I, again, ignite the interest of your researchers to really, to, to, re, to really think on uh, look at this problem and uh, find solutions because some of people really actually are in denial that there is really professional rivalry because um, they think that they are just passionate in the in in the in stating their point but the truth it, it ignites um, this array and um, chaos in the professional realm whenever there is um, uh, there is a very contradicting views on certain issues. And the methodology I have used is uh, first my readings from different books, journals, and uh, education and training. Um, first, I uh, um, consider this as ex experiential essay and integrating observations and interviews from my um, preliminary uh, in, uh, respondents regarding this um, research. Next slide, please. So in analysis, um, having a law background, so I also um, base my analysis on how penalty for an ethical works should um, happen and how can we best um, administer ethical standards in our practice of profession. Next slide. And these are not the recommendations. So basically, the recommendations are more on the academe and the PRC and the other um, uh, entities that regulate uh, professional organizations. So I will, uh, I will, I will just invite you to uh, see the, my paper. And I really thank for this opportunity again, um, given to me by the RI to um, share um, and. Um, to give uh, insights about ethics and, eth and professional collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Eugenio Santiago yeah. III for that presentation. And thank you very much to all our research paper presenters and congratulations for a job well done for presenting your research papers today. So at this juncture, May we request Dr. Fellow Dr. Emeline Q. Lipunao, the Chairman of the Board of Judges, for her same disease and special message. Mommy, you're on. Oh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, we would like to congratulate all the presenters for this afternoon. And um, in behalf of the Royal Institute Singapore, uh, this is to congratulate you all for a very well uh, uh, research paper that you have shared this afternoon. And um, um, for the, for, 
for, for um, the presenter and distress gratitude and online coping strategies in the academe during the pandemic by uh, Dr. Amelie um, uh, Chico. Um, uh, yes, she, she shared that um, the um, finding, finding showed that adequate information in her study, find, uh, the findings showed that adequate information and high risks perceptions were accessible to students. No? And, and um, uh, non-medical uh, preven prevention measures were perceived uh, as highly effective. And there were students satisfied also uh, with the government's actions to mitigate problems that we are very happy to take note. And unwillingness to the online blended learning approach, however, has also been observed. No? So um, uh, students also use different approaches to deal with the problems of mental challenges. And uh, this we would like to ask from, from her in a short while, the interventions for such and these challenges on mental health, uh, on, the, on mental health, okay? And they would like to thank Dr. Amelie for uh, sharing us the findings uh, on her research study. Congratulations, Dr. Amelie. And um, we also have um, um, the, um, the paper of um, Mr. Junil A. Constantino. And um, um, uh, he all, the, the study on, um, on, on the, um, the findings that you have revealed on your study on the performance of the B.E.D. L. Let takers is weak, no? in both the general education and professional education, whereas the performance of BSE lab takers is weak in both the specialization subject and professional education. So further, it was revealed uh, uh, in your study that the performance of uh, lab, uh, lab of the repeater, lab repeaters were below the national passing rate, no? So um, uh, it was highly recommended then that an intervention uh, be done among the left takers of NEUST, SIC, most especially on the repeaters. No? And uh, in addition, um, your study has uh, uh, strongly recommended that the College of Education must consider the full implementation of the board uh, performance enhancement plan as proposed. So congratulations also. This is a very good study, uh, Sir Junil A. Constantino. Congrats. And uh, for the number three presenter, um, uh, for Dr. Eugenio R. Santiago, uh, wow, this is a very good uh, uh, study that you have shared for this afternoon. The battle of who's uh, battling the professional rivalry and promoting the culture of professional ethical collaboration, and um, and um, you you have uh, you have also uh, uh, emphasized in this um, study of yours that uh, the professional and the experts community are the hope of those less in life, no. And that is to find answers and solutions and address the present problems of the society. No? And through secondary data derived from reliable data sources in the World Wide Web and analysis by the researcher whose practice involved the promotion of ethics and collaboration with different kinds of government agencies a set of recommendations that may address the problem shall be devised. And this is a very good study. And bihirai um, maganitong studies now at this point in time that we are in the uh, pandemic state, no? uh, we, what we call the professional ethical collaboration, okay? And uh, another one, um, um, the study of, um, of Dr. Brian uh, Esporlas. Um, uh, congratulations also on this. And uh, 
Wow, this is a new thing, and um, uh, the sharing of your um, our, uh, of your studies are really very informative, and uh, we look uh, forward to these uh, uh, recommendations. We were in your main goal of your study is for orthodontists and respiratory therapists to work together to come up with a set of craniofacial and airway standard values no? for Filipino that will serve as a diagno diagnostic tools to identify any, mor any morphologic deviation. And congratulations for sharing this, Dr. Brian. Yeah, and um, we look forward to that, to the tool that uh, are to be developed soon, okay? And um, who is the last one that I have not mentioned? Uh, and Dr. Dizon, and um, uh, uh, are you on your study on students' perception and attitude toward uh, plagiarism in academic, academic writing? basis for intervention to improve understanding of acad academic uh, integrity. And um, um, your study revealed that uh, there is a uh, significant relationship between attitudes towards plagiarism and students' perceptions of various forms of plagiarism in academic writing or uh, scholarly work. So in con conclusion, uh, you have em emphasized that uh, particular attention should be given to academic integrity intervention by broadening students' attitudes towards plagiarism. So we are all very happy for this very, uh, uh, we have a, a, a very good um, research studies that were shared uh, for this afternoon and um, um, iba ibang character na mga studies, no? And uh, thank you for sharing it from health to plagiarism to ethical collaboration. Wow, um, we have all sorts of varieties of studies and, uh, and uh, we're very much, uh, it's so informative and uh, we're very much um, um, excited on, the, on, the res res on your research recommendations uh, hopefully that will be developed uh, soon no? to help uh, the Filipino community. And um, again, we congratulate all of you for a very good research papers presented. Thank you very much in behalf of RIS. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Emeline Q. Libuna for that comprehensive synthesis and your special message. Thank you so much, ma'am. So at this juncture, we will now have the open forum. So if you have any more questions, suggestions, recommendations to our research presenters, to our speakers, to RI officers, you may do so now. Thank you.
Yes, ma'am. May I ask something? Um, I would like to ask uh, uh, to uh, Dr. Amelie Chico more on the paper that she presented. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Dr. Amelie. Hi, good yes, afternoon, Dr. Amelie. Yeah. How is Panabo City? Uh, it's doing fine po uh, in in terms of yung COVID patients namin, ma'am. Uh, low naman po kami. Low risk na po kami. That's good to know, no? And um, um, your, your study on distress, gratitude, and online coping strategies in the academy, especially in the academy during the pandemic, napaka very relevant, no? no? And uh, this is a very good study, Doc uh, Amelie. And uh, I just want to know more. Uh, you have mentioned uh, in your abstracts that uh, you have submitted that um, um, uh, it is important to address also the mental health of learners. No, may we know what? Um, may we know what different approaches? Uh, uh, that that uh, have you interventions on how to deal with this mental health uh, challenges that uh, you have in uh, in your among your learners in uh, Panabo City. Uh, as the research coordinator, ma'am, we have already an online readiness uh, research, ma'am. This this is actually the first step that I have done. I, I conducted this during summertime, uh, during the pandemic when when we have no uh, means to travel po because of the uh, 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 commu the ACQ or the really extensive po. So what I did is I. I uh, I asked my students because we have messenger po in in uh, we have a messenger in our classes. So I uh, asked them to uh, answer my my uh, questionnaire, and then uh, with regards to the uh, address po, I, I conducted another research po. If they're really uh, ready for, kasi po yung problema namin dito is really internet infrastructure, ma'am. So, mahirap talaga kasi we have also far-flung barangay sa mga students. So, what we did, I, I, the intervention that I have done po is actually I presented already in the Commission on Higher Education last uh, January 21. About from this research po, I conducted an online readiness po of how we can deal with the, the mental, another research po yun siya ma'am. So this is actually during the pandemic time, so very anxious yung mga tao, that's why uh, paano kaya natin i-measure yung mga bata if they're really ready. So uh, the intervention po ma'am is, nanganak na po ito ng isang research po. Oh, that's good. Kaya, uh, Oh, oh, so uh, it, uh, actually, it was commended by the Commission on Higher Education that I will share to other schools po yung standardized questionnaire nito, so that they can also measure the online readiness and that the the baby of this research, mom, is a study research, but this research po is. Only uh, paano nila yung coping strategy talaga ng mga bata yan lang po ma'am uh, yeah the, yeah thank you for that doc amelie at least you're doing you're already starting on it and that uh, it is actually an offshoot of your initial research, uh, research right so tuloy tuloy na yan no kasi at the end of it it's uh, the mental readiness of the learners eh, that you have to attend to the challenges uh, behind those learners and how to adapt this uh, new normal new normal way of life that we have now, no? Sige, thank you very much. Um, gusto ko lang malaman kung hanggang saan na itong study mo na ito, no? Nanganak na po siya, ma'am. Nanganak ng nanganak po. Okay. <laughs> Salamat. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, can I have another one more question, ma'am Helen? Yes, ma'am. As, as they are um, uh, computing the, <laughs> nagtatabulate pa lang naman sila dun sa ating mga score sheets, no? Yes, uh, uh, um, may, may, I have, I, I would want to pose a, um, a, a question here to um, Mr. Junil Constantino, no? 
dun sa um, sta, Sir Junil, Mr. Junil Constantino. Where are you? Sir, okay. Uh -oh. Wow. Ang, ang ganda ng iyong analysis ano, on the performance uh, in licensure examination for teachers. No? Napaka-comprehensive yes. din ito. No? Imagine, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Imagine uh, performance licensure examination for teachers. No? Of, um, um, ano to? For teachers um, of teacher education graduates of... Um, ano to? NEUST San, Isid San Isidro Campus. Um, na notice ko lang kasi doon sa iyong uh, um, highly recommended uh, actions uh, as intervention yes, as a result of your study, yung nabanggit dito, uh, yung abstract, yung um, it is recommended that the College of Education must concede, consider the full implementation of board performance enhancement plan as proposed no yes, uh, mukhang napaka uh, substantial ito na kailangan yes, mag take into effect ano yes, ano na kaya yun lang yung gusto kong malaman ano nang estado nito uh, nasaan na siya oo balita so ng kami kasi ito na yung institutionalizing the professionally professionalizing the the led uh, this uh, pictures no uh, the uh, lalo na sa uh, roles ninyo as uh, teachers on the on the academe no so ano na kumusta na estado nito uh -oh. actually po ma'am we presented that paper last year in our in-house review and it was presented also to the head of the college of education here in uh, here in in USC San Isidro campus and to the uh, to the office concerned um, because our problem is more on the repeaters, so we contacted the alumni office on actually having an update on those who already failed in the licensure examination for teachers because they are really the one who really needs intervention regarding the lead performance. It is actually they were actually pulling down the, the our passing percentage and not the first timer. That's why so far we already give the proposed plan and I think they are doing well of updating the uh, repeaters of those who failed in the licensure examination for teachers. And as a matter of fact, they already, I think, distributed a uh, reviewer to those who replied back. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma uh, uh, This is very good. At least you have come up with a study such as this. Uh, these are yes, very good data no, for the higher education to uh, come actually, up with policies. No? Yes, policy thank you, ma'am. It lead to policy recommendations to further improve the teaching industry, right? Uh -huh. Yes, especially in our campus. Uh, actually, this research is was first proposed by our campus director herself, um, Engineer Maria Teresita C. Vega. Siya po talaga yung nag-ano ng study nito, and then I just... I just presented it and then do some analysis further on how we can improve actually the lead performance of our college of education students. That's good. Extend also our extend also our congratulations to Maria Teresita Sibega. Thank you. This is also a very good study. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, Helen, pwede pang isa pa. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> sure po, sure po. Are you ready sa tabulation, di pa? Not yet, ma'am. You can go on po. Okay. Um, may, may, meron lang akong tanong kay Dr. Brian Esporlas. Dr. Brian. Hi, Doc. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. This is a new menu on us, no? Uh, Bago. <laughs> it's all about, it's about, ano yan? Obstructive sleep. Sleep up, yeah. Yan, yeah. No? Eh, marami sa atin ngayon mga nag i -snore. Yes, ma'am. 18% po of the Philippine uh, population. Mga sleep pattern orders, lalo na kami mga, ay, ayoko naman sabihin, mga young ones pa naman kami, no? <laughs> but, you know, uh, let's accept it. Meron it, itong obstructive sleep amnia, no? This is another, um, napaka-educational napaka -educa napaka ito na na share nyo sa amin and very informative. No, thank you. Thank you, Doc, for sharing that. 
and that this is another menu on the courses that uh, we have uh, we have evaluated for this colloquium that we had uh, no touching on this no kaya exciting eh kasi we have a variety of research studies that are being uh, presented uh, to this um, uh, to to the ri no and uh, thank you for sharing that uh -oh. Uh, Doc, saan patutungo itong study na to? Kailan kaya mm. mag-develop yung tool na yun? Oo. Um, <laughs> Very ano ito eh, useful ito eh. Oo. Yes, ma'am. Kasi ma'am, um, since the, our theme is human capitalization, uh, I thought that I can present this because um, the human resource actually is the actual driving force of our, of our economy. So if we cannot give them the appropriate diagnostic tools so that we can evaluate their condition, then we are bound to fail. Yeah. So that is my, that is the reason why I I I, uh, I come up with this uh, with this um, research. And currently, ma'am, um, currently, ma'am, in the United States, technically, ang tagal na ng concept na ganito. Kaya lang they all have the equipments to check your airway morphology that they don't need x-ray anymore they can they can insert a, a microscope inside your throat so oh. they can see it directly however that technology is that technology is uh, very advanced that it is not yet available in the philippines so what i did is to come up with a um thousand you must mura <laughs> Na, uh, uh, na affordable para sa Philippines that could offer the same um, the, uh, the same mechanics para sa mga pasyente naman natin. And currently, ma'am, we are, I am working with the College of Respiratory Therapy and um, some group of uh, ENT so yeah. that I, we can continue with this research. And actually, in, in the hospital that I am affiliated with in Cavite, yung normative values ko na yung ginagamit ng mga ENT to uh, to standardize their treatment for the Filipino kasi nga napansin nga nila yung yung norms na ginagamit nila initially is galing nga sa Caucasian and it doesn't fit to their patients so mm -hmm. now that i presented this this norm that that they can use for their patient ang nangyari tuloy doc mas appropriate yung treatment na ginagawa namin ngayon tapos ang lahat ng bagsak is sa akin sa sa dentista kasi po ang result kami mga dentista pwedeng magpalaki ng airway doon kami mm -hmm. nagbibigay ngayon ng appliance or uh, appliance sa sinuso sa bibig ng pasyente para pag matutulog yung pasyente bubuka yung airway niya so hindi siya mag snore so ngayon mm -hmm. nagkaroon na po tayo ng concept ngayon sa Philippines because of this study nagkaroon na po ng concept sa Philippines ng anti-snore appliance na ito yung mga pag may mga pasyente na lakas ng humilit kahit bata pa o lalo na mga medyo obese nating kasamahan Pilipino they are given this appliance based on the norms that I have created tapos mawawala abruptly yung kanilang snoring makakatulog siya pero hindi yung pasyente ang nagpapasalamat eh ang nagpapasalamat yung bed partner nung pasyente kasi finally Aha. makakatulog na sila <laughs> hindi yeah, na lagi <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i'm just very glad that this normative uh, values that i created in 2016 is already being utilized nationwide wow congratulations okay. congratulations on that oh. and uh, we, we, we really thank you for sharing that study of yours no Mamaya nga, magte-test ako after this eh. Sana doon ako sa picture number one. Yes, <laughs> Meron kang okay. four pictures na binigay eh. Picture number one, two, yes. three, and four. No? <laughs> if you are in number three or in number four, you are of high risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea. O oh, yan. Lahat tayo mamaya mag-test ng sarili natin. Ha? At yes. that's a practical way of uh, testing it. San tayo, no? Just put out your tongue out, no, and then magsalamin ka, no. Ay uh -huh. dok. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing yes. it. Uh -huh. Salamat po. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Dr. Libuna. Thank you so much to Dr. Esporlas and to all our research paper presenters and our 
attendees for today. So I guess we are now ready to announce the winners for today's International Research Colloquium. May we request Dr. Libunao to announce the winners for the winner for best paper and best presenter. Announce. Saan ko siya titignan? Was it submitted to me? Okay, okay. So uh, again, congratulations uh, to all our uh, presenters for this afternoon. Those papers that you have presented were really very excellent and uh, very scholarly done. And uh, and uh, we would love we would like to uh, uh, give our utmost uh, thanks to all of you for sharing it to everybody else, especially members of RI and would be members of RI. Kaya dapat sumama na sila, at sumali na sila, no? At maraming natututunan dito sa RI no uh, mapapalawak ang ating mga kaalaman sa dami ng mga papers na nagshi-share no and these are scientifically uh, uh, studied uh, papers and we are really very uh, uh, thankful for uh, these presenters especially for our uh, uh, presenters this afternoon okay eto na here are the tallied results and um, best paper Best paper goes to <laughs> Mr. Junil A. Constantino. Ay, congratulations, Juni, Mr. Junil. And um, for uh, let's go for best presenter. Uh, this goes to um, FDR Dr. Brian E. Esporlas. No, Dr. Brian, best presenter. Okay. Uh, so for the best paper, uh, Mr. Junil A. Constantino, and best presenter is uh, goes to Dr. Brian E. Esparlas. Congratulations Thank and you. to everybody else who presented for this afternoon. Thank In you. Day, Congratulations afternoon. to our winners. Can we have can we have some 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 words uh, from Junil and also from. Uh, Dr. Esporlas later. Junil, probably you can go ahead and uh, say us your uh, whatever, uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> Maraming salamat. Well, actually, I wasn't expecting that my research will be the best paper for this, uh, uh, for this session. But uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much for, uh, and for listening to my presentation also. And I hope that our proposal, the enhancement plan, will come into fruition and bring positive results in our campus. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Thank you po. Yes, thank you also. Now, may we hear also from Dr. Brian. Dr. Brian, where are you? Esport, Dr. Brian Esport. Yes, Esport. Po. Yeah. yes. thank uh -huh. you very much for this uh, recognition. Um, in behalf of the Royal Institution, Institution, Institute of Dentistry, I would like to extend my my thanks to the organizing committee for this international research colloquium and um kunin ko na rin po yung pagkakataon for those who are asking me privately may mga nangingi po sa akin ng number i already posted it in our in the group chat but my number is 0922-8116495 and um i am not i am not the only one who practice oral facial pain and sleep medicine for dental, for dental patients. I have 68 students who are also a fellow of Royal Institution Dentistry Singapore who can do uh, practice just like mine. So they are located nationwide already. So all you have to do now is to look for me or just send me a number, um, a message. I can refer you to them if you need their assistance. And thank you once again for uh, this recognition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Brian and Mr. June. Uh, sana ma makita pa namin kayo in our future uh, uh, conferences that we will be holding, no? And to uh, invite all others to come in also, no? Yes, uh, They should not. Uh, they should not miss this chance of you know hearing you out, no? Napaka na ang, ang, very educational, informative, and highly substantive ito mga pinag-uusapan natin sa RI, no? So sana ma, ma invite natin sila to come and uh, join us. 
us in every colloquium that we do. No? Yes, thank yes, you. Ma'am. Thank you for, Beautiful. thank you everyone. Thank you for all our presenters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Libunao, and congratulations to all our winners, and also congratulations and thank you very much to all our presenters and all our attendees for today. So at this juncture, may we now request Dr. Fellow Dr. Athena Georgine Ang for a closing address. A very good afternoon to all of you uh, on the eve of the Lunar New Year. So yeah. tomorrow we will be welcoming the Year of the Ox. So on this afternoon, I'd like to greet all of you, of course, uh, honorary fellow Dr. Gloria T. Baisa, um, our keynote speaker today, Dr. fellow Dr. Richard Danos, Dr. fellow Dr. Emlyn Libunao, uh, Dr. fellow Dr. Danilo T. Reyes, Dr. fellow Dr. Donatilla San Juan, our chancellor, Dr. Samuel Salvador, our Chief Compliance Officer, Dr. Helen Molano, our management team led by Ms. Lavalin Malte, our research presenters, RI members, and guests. So on behalf of the Royal Institution Singapore, I have the honor and pleasure to thank each and every one of you for your active participation this afternoon. And I'm pleased once again to congratulate today's presenters. And of course, special congratulations to our best paper, Mr. Junil, Constantino and our best presenter, Dr. Fellow Dr. Brian E. Esporlas. Yeah, and he shared his number earlier. I actually have visited his clinic and Dr. Ice <laughs> helped me with my problem that time. <laughs> okay, so a big thank you to our distinguished panel of judges led by Dr. Libu now. And um, congratulations once again to all of you, our research presenters, guests, and participants in today's IRC. So the Royal Institution, um, as you know, it is our vision to be the world-class, global, multidisciplinary, professional membership and accrediting institution. So again, we repeat our commitment to leveling the playing field by recognizing deserving people and organizations and by serving as the premier platform for global networking, connecting education, businesses, commerce and industries and facilitating collaboration, innovation, and perpetual learning for more opportunities, benefits, privileges, global recognition, and status. So we recognize the contributions, your experience, your academic and professional qualifications, your talent, skills, track record, and achievements of all those who deserve recognition. And we continuously strive to provide opportunities to enhance the skills, competitive advantages, academic, professional, and entrepreneurial status of our members. So although the borders remain closed and are likely to be closed for some more time in the foreseeable future, we keep on gathering online to share our knowledge and wisdom from our own research papers, discussions, and studies. So I trust that we had a fruitful afternoon today, learning and sharing. And um, you know, we always have more interesting topics and learn things that in, um, we don't know about. And um, we assure you of our commitment to continue to organize more such activities. So uh, we invite you to like our Facebook page and also to subscribe to our YouTube channel, right? Where um, later on, you will be able to find even today's event on our YouTube channel. Um, while we invite you to follow us there and uh, to keep up to date with our activities and events, one of our upcoming activities, um, our, our IRC and our ICC, uh, we also have um, on March 3, uh, on the topic, meeting the challenges of the new normal the relevance and advantages of online learning education among educational institutions uh, to be delivered no less by our chancellor. Okay, on March 3, um, we'll be sharing more details of that with you. And in closing today, um, I'd like to wish all of you 
a happy and prosperous Lunar New Year of the Ox. May we all stay safe and healthy. Um, and may the good Lord bless all of us until we meet again. Good afternoon and bless you. Bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Fellow, Dr. Athena Georgina for that closing address. So thank you so much, everyone. So before we formally end our event for today, may we request everyone to kindly open their camera for one last time for our career photo. Okay, so on a count of three, one, two, three, big smile. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, all the judges, our presenters, our attendees, RI officials, RI staff. Thank you so much, everyone. And we hope to see you in our next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dad. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi, sir, Salvador. Hello, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you, ma'am.